Would you buy a house on the moon? The moon colony. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live on the moon? Imagine a bustling city with lunar skyscrapers, gardens filled with alien plant life, and a breathtaking view of Earth from your window. Sounds like science fiction, right? But what if I told you that living on the moon might not be as far-fetched as it seems? Today, we're diving into the possibility of building a moon colony that could be our future home. Get ready to explore the wonders and challenges of lunar living. But before moving ahead, if you are new to this channel, make sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe so you won't miss out on our future videos. Before we get into the nitty-gritty details, let's address the elephant in the room. Can people really live on the moon? I mean, not just survive, but actually thrive in a community where they can truly call it home. Until now, the moon has been more like a remote work outpost, a place where people go for scientific research or temporary missions. But could we take it a step further and establish a permanent settlement? Let's find out. You know, recently, Elon Musk, the visionary behind SpaceX, made a bold claim. He said that we could create a self-sustaining city on Mars if we can transport 1 million tons of cargo from Earth. It sounds like a massive undertaking, but it's not impossible. If SpaceX's Starship rockets can deliver their cargo capacity of 100 tons per launch, and if we have a fleet of 1,000 ships, we could accomplish this mission in a matter of months. But what about the moon? While Elon Musk is primarily focused on Mars, we shouldn't overlook the potential of our closest celestial neighbor. If we need 1 million tons of resources to build a city on Mars, it's tempting to think we might need less for a moon colony due to its smaller size. However, the reality is that the same amount of resources would be necessary. The advantage the moon has over Mars is its proximity to Earth, allowing for faster round trips. We could transport cargo to the moon in just four to five days. But let's not dismiss Mars altogether. It has its own set of advantages and challenges. First, let's talk about some of the complications of living on the moon. One major hurdle is the extreme temperature swings. During the lunar night, temperatures can fall to a bone-chilling negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit, while during the day, it skyrockets to a scorching positive 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Such extreme temperatures pose a challenge for maintaining habitable conditions. On the other hand, Mars offers a less hostile temperature range. It's mostly cold, with temperatures peaking at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit in certain places. Unlike the Moon, which lacks a substantial atmosphere, Mars has a thin but more substantial atmosphere, making it easier to manage temperature regulation. Another hurdle for a moon city is the need for thermal insulation. To keep a lunar settlement comfortable, we would require effective insulation against the extreme temperatures. While the idea of a transparent dome over the city might be enticing, it's challenging to find a material that can keep the heat out while remaining practical. A more viable solution would involve building a low and dense settlement and covering it with lunar regolith, the dust and rocks that cover the moon's surface. This heavy layer of regolith acts as insulation and could potentially be mixed with a binding agent to create a denser, concrete-like material. But thermal insulation is not the only concern. Protection from meteorites and solar activity is crucial. Earth's atmosphere shields us from these threats, but the moon lacks a similar protective layer. Although the moon has a minimal exosphere with approximately 100 molecules per cubic centimeter, it doesn't possess a strong magnetic field like Earth does. This means that even if we were to add density to the lunar atmosphere, it would likely be blown away by the solar wind. Now, let's talk about gravity. The moon's gravity is about 15% as powerful as Earth's, making it only half as powerful as Mars. This weaker gravitational force raises questions about its impact on human bodies. We've conducted studies on prolonged periods in microgravity, and so far, we haven't observed any permanent or destructive side effects on the human body. Astronauts like Valery Polyakov spent 437 days in Earth orbit without suffering any long-term impairments. This suggests that living on the moon might be a viable option, at least for shorter durations. Instead of committing to a years-long mission to Mars, we could potentially adopt a shift-based system on the moon. People could live on the moon for a year and then return to Earth 
Earth for a year, allowing for flexibility and mitigating potential risks associated with prolonged lunar stays. With a travel time of just a few days, transportation between the Moon and Earth becomes relatively feasible. But let's take a moment to appreciate just how accessible the moon is. In comparison, a trip across the ocean takes about two weeks on a boat. And even a record-breaking jet plane, circumnavigation of the globe took 60 hours. On the other hand, a rocket can transport us to the moon in a mere three days. The proximity and ease of travel make the moon an enticing option for colonization. So let's ponder the possibility of a moon city. In the movie Star Trek First Contact, Captain Picard mentioned the existence of over 50 million people living on the moon by the year 2373. While that's a work of fiction, it leads us to wonder if we could actually accommodate such a population on the moon within the next few centuries. With the moon's vast surface area of approximately 15 million square miles, fitting 50 million people comfortably seems achievable. To do so, we must address crucial needs like air, water, food, and power. Oxygen, a vital component for human survival, can be extracted from the moon's surface. Each cubic meter of lunar regolith contains an average of 1.4 tons of minerals, including approximately 630 kilograms of oxygen. This amount of oxygen would sustain a person for about two years, and we can extract it using electrolysis. Water, another essential resource, is likely present on the moon. Craters might hold water ice, delivered by asteroids and preserved in a frozen state. We can also extract water from the regolith itself by heating the lunar surface and capturing the resulting water vapor. And yes, recycling and purifying urine would also be part of the water conservation process. Astronauts have been doing it for years. Now, let's talk about food. While packaged dried foods might suffice for a short duration, in the long term, we need fresh plant-based nutrition to keep our bodies healthy. NASA has been experimenting with growing plants on the International Space Station and has successfully cultivated leafy vegetables. Having a sustainable source of fresh food would be crucial for the well-being of moon residents. Communication is also essential for a moon colony. Not only would we need reliable means to send and receive information, but we would also require robust communication channels to connect with people on Earth. SpaceX's Starlink satellite network, which aims to provide high bandwidth and low latency communication, could play a vital role in keeping moon residents connected with their home planet. And let's not forget about power. Initially, solar energy would be the primary source of power on the moon. With its proximity to the sun and the abundance of sunlight, solar panels could provide the necessary energy to meet initial power demands. But in the long run, there's an even more intriguing possibility, harnessing the power of helium-3. Helium-3 is an element found in the regolith of the moon. It is produced by the sun's radiation, which gets absorbed into the lunar surface. While we don't have access to helium-3 on Earth, the moon has an abundant supply. Scientists believe that just 100 kilograms of helium-3 could power a small city for an entire year. This element has tremendous potential as a clean and efficient fuel source. So when we consider the essentials of air, water, food, and power, it becomes evident that building a self-sustaining city on the moon is within the realm of possibility. Of course, there are still numerous challenges to overcome, but the advancements we've made in the space exploration and technology gives us hope that we can tackle these obstacles. Now, let's take a step back and compare the moon to Mars as potential colonization candidates. The moon offers several advantages over Mars. Firstly, its proximity to Earth allows for shorter travel times, making logistics and transportation more manageable. On the other hand, Mars has a more stable temperature range, a slightly more substantial atmosphere and higher gravity compared to the Moon. Additionally, Mars possesses the potential for terraforming, a process by which we could alter its environment to make it more habitable for humans. However, the challenges of living on Mars are also significant. The extended duration of missions, the complexities of sustaining a large population, and the uncertainty of long-term effects on the human body in Martian gravity and atmosphere make it a much more formidable endeavor. So here's the question. Is the Moon a better candidate for colonization than Mars? 
It's a tough call, and opinions may vary. The moon's advantages in terms of proximity, travel time, and resource requirements make it an attractive option for establishing a self-sustaining city in the near future. With continued technological advancements and exploration, we may see humans calling the moon home sooner than we think. But what do you think? Do you believe we could build a thriving moon colony? Or do you think Mars holds more promise for human colonization? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. We'd love to hear your perspective. That's all for today's episode. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Thanks for watching.